All right, we finally reached the last country beginning with an A. And that only took about, I don't know, like three months. All right, here we go, Azerbaijan. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everybody, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. You know the drill, let's dissect the flag. The flag of Azerbaijan is a tricolor banner of blue, red, and green with the white crescent and star emblem in the center. The blue represents the Turkic heritage of the people, the red represents progress and social democracy, and the green represents the Islamic civilization. The crescent, of course, you would think means Islam, and it does, kind of. However, the Azerbaijanis and Turks will tell you that the symbol originated from the Turkic people and not the Arabs, so the symbol could also refer to Turkic heritage. And the eight-pointed star, some people will tell you that the star represents the eight tribes, like the Dumbuli, Kizil bash and etc but it actually represents the eight letters of the word azerbaijan written in arabic even though azerbaijan has adopted a latin based alphabet moving on to make things short, if you look at Azerbaijan's borders, it kind of looks like a crazy bird flying while it's losing one big feather. Located in the central Caucasus region of Eurasia, Azerbaijan is bordered by five other countries. You would think four, but we'll talk about this little guy in a sec. And the mighty Caspian Sea to the east. The capital is Baku, right along the coast of the Caspian, and the country is divided into nine regions and one interesting autonomous republic. We'll talk about that soon, but first... Now, as we mentioned in the Armenia video, we did talk about the Nagorno-Karabakh region and how there's a lot of tension and conflict. First of all, do not call it a republic to an Azerbaijani, they will get mad at you. The Nagorno-Karabakh region is not recognized as a sovereign state by any other country in the world, and today it's kind of considered as a de jure region of Azerbaijan, even though Azerbaijanis avoid going there. Also in the Armenia video, I did talk about the Armenian genocide, which did kind of ruffle up a lot of feathers with the Azerbaijani and Turkish viewers, and so I think it's maybe only fair if I talk about the Azerbaijani side of the perspective. The Azerbaijanis will mention the Hojali massacre, in which hundreds of Azerbaijanis were attacked by Armenians troops. It's estimated somewhere around 300 to 600 people were killed during the massacre. Both sides have attacked each other in the conflict. I'm gonna move on before things get a little bit more awkward. Then you have the strange but quirky separated exclave known as the Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic in the west bordered by Armenia and Turkey. By the way, the Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic is not a separate country. It is part of Azerbaijan. They don't want to be separate. Remember how in the Armenia video I told you that Mount Ararat was kind of considered the area where Noah's Ark landed? Well, the Nakhchivan Autonomous Republic is kind of considered the area where Noah's family live. This area is the only part of Azerbaijan that has access to Turkey for a very, very narrow eight or so kilometer border along the Araz River. The only problem is, because of the whole border blockade, if someone from Nakhchivan wants to go to the rest of Azerbaijan by road, they would have to literally cross over into Iran and drive along the 12 highway paralleling the Araz River all the way to the nearest main crossing at the Milmugan Dam, nearly 50 miles from the technical border of Armenia. And you could probably guess why. And as you can guess, the Nakhchivan region is another area of controversy between Azerbaijan and, you guessed it, Armenia. Now, although Armenia isn't fighting for ownership of Nakhchivan, essentially this is what each side of the argument is saying. Nakhchivan, stop destroying the ancient Armenian sites and monuments in the Nakhchivan region as a means to erase all the Armenian culture from the area. Those claims are nothing more than just Armenian propaganda based on no actual evidence, and plus those aren't even Armenian. Those are Caucasian Albanian. Oh yeah, well I'm gonna take this to the EU court. Go ahead! I'm not telling you who is right or wrong, I'm just saying this is what they're saying. Let's go back to Baku, shall we? Located on the Absheron Peninsula, or the bird's beak of Azerbaijan that juts out into the Caspian, the capital of Baku is not only the largest city and the best harbor in the Caspian Sea, but is a breathtakingly beautiful architectural wonder with its world-famous flame towers completed in 2012. Also, keep in mind, Baku has the world's largest KFC. So anyway, the interesting thing though is that Azerbaijan was actually the first Muslim majority democratic secular country in the world, and they were also the first Muslim majority country in the world to have theaters, operas, and modern day universities. Nonetheless, Azerbaijan still holds on to its ancient artifacts and historical sites, such as the famous Maiden's Tower and the even more captivating underwater Sabayil Castle, known as the Atlantis of the Caspian. But to really understand how this land works, we need to talk about the... Now this is where things get a little interesting because the landscape of Azerbaijan has some pretty cool tricks up its sleeve. For one, the land is about half mountainous with the Caucasus mountain ranges dominating the north and west parts of the country and the Talish mountain range in the south Lakaran region. With Nordic wind patterns streaming down the Caucasus, yet the mild Caspian Sea effect, the climate can be quite drastically opposing depending on where you are. Azerbaijan has this kind of strange terrain phenomena in which it has cold alpine mountains right next to these 
dry subtropical zones right next to the coast in which we can find things like orange and lemon groves and tea plantations, which kind of need a warmer climate to grow in. By the way, Azerbaijanis love tea. They kind of obsess over it. They even made multiple monuments to tea. But the place where things get really interesting though would have to be in the Golbustan region south of Baku. One of the world-renowned landforms that Azerbaijan would have to be known for would have to be its famous mud volcanoes. About half of all the world's mud volcanoes are found right here in Golbustan. Another cool thing is that Azerbaijan is rich in natural gas and petroleum deposits, which make about 80% of the economy. And because of this, over time, Azerbaijan has built a mind-bogglingly complex and elaborate yet strikingly mesmerizing system of trestles, pipelines, and causeways that connect the oil reservoirs offshore in the middle of the Caspian. In fact, in 1949, Azerbaijan actually built the world's first offshore oil platform in Neftishlari. Speaking of countries of the oil developing world, let's talk about... Now, very few people actually understand what an Azerbaijani is, let alone where they came from, or even how to even pronounce Azerbaijan. We'll discuss more about that in a bit, but first, Azerbaijan has roughly nine and a half million people, or roughly the same size as Sweden, and ethnically, it's quite homogenous, with 91% of the people identifying as ethnically Azerbaijani, and the remainder of the 9% minority coming from a slew of other nationalities and people groups, the largest populations coming from Russians, Lesguins, Talish, and believe it or not, Armenians. However, that's more in reference towards the Armenians living in the Nagorno Karabakh region as it's pretty much impossible or incredibly rare to find any Armenian living anywhere else in Azerbaijan. But who are the Azerbaijanis? Some people will tell you that they are descended from the Persians, others might tell you the Caucasian Albanians. Not to be confused with modern day Albanians, that's a completely different thing. Well, the general consensus is that the Azerbaijani people today are Turks or Turkic people. Not to be confused with Turkish people from Turkey, although they are very close cousins. Yeah, in the world of geographical sociology, a lot of things sound like other things, but they aren't exactly the same things as those things. This means that the Azerbaijani language is very close to the Turkish language and people can travel interchangeably between both countries and relatively understand each other. It's like Spanish and Portuguese. Now what's really interesting is that Azerbaijan is one of the few Muslim Shia majority countries in the world. They also have a very interesting culture dynamic in which the majority of people identify as culturally Muslim rather than consistently devout and observant Muslim. This type of social coherence really permeates throughout the population of the country as it's very noticeably secular in the way how it operates. Women are allowed to wear whatever they want and are not required to wear hijabs or burqas and religious freedom is allowed. All right, well, moving on. To put it simply, Azerbaijan has a long, long history of friends, but also some surprising new people that they just started to kind of click with. Today, Azerbaijan has diplomatic relations with over 160 countries, mostly centralized in Europe and Asia. Azerbaijan's immediate neighbors to the north and south, Georgia and Iran, have always had cordial relations with Azerbaijan and have open borders and trade agreements. When it comes to Russia, though, things are a little hit or miss. Yes, as a former Soviet state, Azerbaijan does have ties to Russia, and they have been working on their diplomacy and partnerships. However, most Azerbaijanis disapprove of the relations with Russia, mostly because they are more supportive of Armenia in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict and even took part in fights like the Hojali massacre. Pakistan is kind of like the fangirl of Azerbaijan. Pakistan cheers for Azerbaijan and recognizes their side of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict and has even gone so far as to even unrecognize Armenia as a state. Strangely enough though, Azerbaijan is actually one of the few Muslim majority countries that actually gets along pretty well with Israel. They provide Israel with fuel and Israel provides them with agricultural and technological assistance. The Jewish community has lived peacefully within Azerbaijan for over 1,500 years. Persecution was virtually unknown to the Jewish community in Azerbaijan, which also served as a safe haven for Jews fleeing from the Holocaust. And finally, we get to Turkey. Turkey, as you can probably guess, is without a doubt Azerbaijan's best friend. Despite the Sunni-Shia difference, they have the closest ties culturally, linguistically, and diplomatically. Turkey also supports Azerbaijan in nearly all of their disputes and conflicts, like a proud older brother. There's a saying between them, the two of them are one nation, two countries. In conclusion, I can guarantee you there's pretty much no place like Azerbaijan. I mean, it's a Shia Muslim majority, yet kind of secular country that drinks wine and gets along with Israel and has mud volcanoes. What? Stay tuned, our first country starting with a B, the Bahamas is coming up next. Hey peeps, just wanna say a quick thank you to all the native Azerbaijani subscribers that helped me with this video. Some of you guys are listed in the credits. And uh, so the next country is the Bahamas. If you are from the Bahamas, contact me at geographylater at gmail.com and let's make that next video. Subscribe to this channel, click on this box that I'm in right now. Hope you have a good one.